Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. I hope everybody stays off to a great start. I'm thankful to be in the land of the living this morning. I'm thankful to be amongst the living this morning. I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me another chance. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Grace Amber. I come on different platforms whenever God gives me a word to share. I come on and I share it with you. So really quick this morning, happy Friday. Thank God it is Friday, y'all. Uh, I want to talk to you from the topic of dance like David dance. Dance like David danced. What am I talking about today? Let's jump in. So you've heard me often say that in your relationship with God, if you have true relationship with God, you will not stay the same. You are going to grow. You're going to grow when you walk with God. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you are obedient to God and you are in right standing with God and you have actual relationship with God, you will not stay the same. You will always grow no matter how old you are, right? And so what has happened is many of us started off uh, on the bottom step of just going to church, right? And so you start with going to church and then praying and then fasting, right? And so what happens is in order for you to take the next step, often you've got to have a need to do it. Your need will motivate you to take the next step. What do I mean? What I'm saying is if you started off, um, saving a dollar a paycheck, right? You will pat yourself on the back because that is a great step for some people. Some people can't even do that, right? But that's only going to take you to a certain point. So once you've mastered that, now what happens? Now you want to see if you can save $5 a paycheck. Then you want to see, you know, that's going to take you to a certain step. You're going to look at your savings. You're going to look and say, okay, Lord, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm actually learning how to save a little bit of money. Okay. Now you did that. Now let's go up to $10 a paycheck. Let's go up to 20. Let's go up to 50. Let's go up to a hundred. Each one one of those times you had to have something to motivate you to take the next step. You mastered one dollar a paycheck, then you went to five. You looked at it, you said, "Okay, this is great, but this is nowhere near where I want to be financially. Let me try to do more." And so, the need for more is what pushes you to take the next step, which will ultimately take you to the next level if you stick with it, right? So, you start off with going to church, and that, that's great. Ain't nothing wrong with going to church. It's a good thing that you go in the house of the Lord, right? But in your relationship with God, you're only going to go, but so far, just going to church. And so when you realize that you realize that there, you know, in your spirit, in your heart, you know, that there is more for you. You know, that there is more out there for you. You know, that God wants more from you and that, that need and that desire is what pushes you to take the next step. So you started off going to church. That's great. But you started having the desire and the need for more. It pushed you to take the next step. You know what the next step is? Now you start learning how to pray. Isn't that good? And so you do that and you see the results of praying. But guess what? Eventually you will see, okay, Lord, I know it's still more out there for me. I know this ain't it. There's got to be something else. And then God will put it into your heart to start fasting. So you started off just going to church. Now you go to church and you pray. Now you go to church and you pray and you've even started fasting and you see the wonderful results of that. But then you will still say, Lord, I'm finding myself in situations. I'm finding myself feeling heavy. I'm praying to you. I'm fasting, but it's like I'm hitting a glass ceiling. What is going on? Why do I feel so heavy laden at times? Why is it that, you know, I see the results of the praying and the fasting. I see it working. We know that it works. But God, I still feel like there's more. Oftentimes I get so bogged down with the weight of this world. What is it that I'm not doing? I want to give you a scripture. Turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm 30th chapter. Psalm 30, excuse me, not Psalm 30th chapter. Psalm 30, go down to the 10th verse. Psalm 30, go down to 10. I'm reading from the NIV. Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. What am I talking about? And what am I trying to tell you and point out in this scripture? That when you just go to church, and you pray and you fast, all those things are wonderful. You got it. That, that, that goes in the toolbox too, right? That's great. 
But one thing that many of us are failing to do is we are failing to praise and worship God. Why is that so important? It is so important when we praise and worship God because what happens is something happens in the spiritual realm and you can't see it. But when you're done praising and worshiping God, you feel like a burden has been lifted off of you. You heard me talk, uh, was it this week or was it last week, about hauling freight. And in that, I was talking about how Another word or another definition for freight is not just cargo and goods and stuff like that, but you will see if you'll Google it and you Google freight, the meaning of freight and the definition of freight, if you go all the way down, you will see that it says a burden or to be laden, a burden or to be laden. And I talked about when I said, talked about hauling freight in that message, I talked about how this is a continuous thing that we must do. We must not just go to the altar and leave our burdens there one time and think that that one time is going to last us for the rest of our life. It doesn't work like that. This is something that we have to continuously do as we become burdened and heavy laden. Guess what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to go back and, and drop a load and drop our burdens and cast our cares on God because he cares for us, right? And that's something that we have to do on a continual basis. Well, we're looking at it and we're saying, God, uh, listen, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm burdened. I'm heavy laden. And God is saying the missing ingredient, you're fasting and you're seeing the results. You're praying and you're seeing the results. You're going to church and you're feeling the results. But you have to go to the next level in order for you to break the glass ceiling that you feel, but you can't see like it's something that's right here above your head that no matter what you do, you can't go any higher. God said you got to praise your way out and you won't have to dance like David danced. And if you will do that, you will see that your welling will go away and be turned into joy. The scripture says, Psalm 30, go down to the 11th verse. You turn my wailing into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me with joy. God wants us to know the praying, the fasting, and the going to church is all necessary. But we have to learn how to praise and worship him. If we will do that, we will find things that are our goals our relationship with God, everything about us will go to the next level. It is your praise that will break the glass ceiling that you are feeling, but you can't see it. It is your praise that is going to get you out of this slump of depression that even though you have prayed and fasted, you can't seem to get over the death. You can't seem to get over being fired. You can't seem to get over the abusive relationship. You can't seem to get over the trauma of the molestation. All the things that you can't seem to get over, you're going to have to learn how to dance like David danced. What do I mean dance like David danced? Let me give it to you in scripture. Because it's a whole nother word I done got from this right here that I'm probably going to give y'all next week. But we're just going to stick with the, the task at hand right now. Turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Samuel. Go down to the 12th verse so that you can understand. Because I know that you have heard the saying, dance like David danced. Well, let's talk about why David danced and how did David dance. Let me tell you. All right. So let's go down 2 Samuel 6 chapter. Go down to the 12th verse. Now, King David was told the Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he has because of the ark of God. So there was an ark that was in the house of Obed-Edom, right? And it was, it is believed and it was said that the ark is what caused the blessings in that household. So David went to bring up the ark Bring up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. Where, uh, wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. While he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of trumpets. They got their hands on this ark that was said to be blessed by God and it brings blessings wherever it goes, essentially. David got it into his position and they're bringing it into the city. As they're bringing it into the city, David is dancing with all his might and not only is he dancing, but the crowd is praising and worshiping right with him, right? As the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. After he had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. 
Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each person in the whole crowd of Israelites, both men and women, and all the people went to their homes. When David returned home to bless his household, Michal, daughter of Saul, came out to meet him and said, how the king of Israel, talking about David, has distinguished himself today, going around half naked in full view of the slave girls of his servants as any vulgar fellow would. Stop. What is happening here? McCall is telling David, look, I seen how you was dancing out there and you was dancing naked. What a disgrace is essentially what McCall was telling David, right? David said to McCall, it was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone from his house when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people Israel. I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this and I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honor. What did David tell McCall? David told McCall, look, I know that you feeling some kind of way about how I was out here dancing before the Lord. But guess what? If you think you saw something then, wait until you see what I do next time. Because the next time that I dance, I'm going to get even more undignified than this. And this is what God is saying that many of us have to do. We have it in our heart. Our, our soul is bursting at the seams. We get in church, they're doing praise and worship, and we want to worship with our soul is jumping. We want to worship, but many of us want to sit in church like this, we're worried about what people will think about us. We're worried about if we'll look crazy. How will we look? How will we sound? Well, I have news for you. Guess what? Many of these people who you're worrying about what they will think of you once you're dancing and praising God, well, guess what happens? Many times, them same people, if they're looking at you even without you praising and dancing, and they're looking at you and they're finding fault and wrong in you. My point is, you can't let the desires of other people, you can't let the desires and the thoughts of other people hinder your praise. You can't let what other people might think about you and their opinions, you can't let that hinder your praise. You can't let that stop you because your breakthrough is going to be in your praise and worship. Many of you are battling with depression and a feeling of heaviness. You feel like you are just in a box, like there's a glass ceiling over your head and you can't figure out why. It's like you've prayed, you've fasted, you're going to church, you're reading the word, right? But for some reason, you still feel like this dark cloud is over your head. God said you go ahead and dance like David danced and praise your way out. And the barrier for many of you is you're worrying about what other people think. But guess what? Them other people ain't got a heaven or a hell to put you in. The heck with them people, you better start praising your God above because the breakthrough that you're praying for for the break for the breakthrough that you need it's gonna come from God and so you better learn how to put your pride to the side right and go to God and praise him and worship him and if you will do those things you will see your life take off to the next level you will see your relationship with God go to the next level your breakthrough is connected to your praise and worship God said if you're feeling heavy and it seems like nothing else is working I don't care where you are if you got to go home and do it in the privacy of your own home, you better learn how to start praising and worshiping your God above. And you better learn how to dance like David danced. The heck with everybody else and what they think. Because they ain't doing a thing for you. Your heavenly father is doing it for you. You better learn how to praise and worship him. You better learn how to dance like David danced. And if the people don't like it, dance even harder. If the people got something to say about you coming out in your clothes, guess what? Tell them next time, like David said, next time I get ready to dance and praise my God, who chose me and appointed me and anointed me for such a time as this, the next time I get ready to praise and worship him, I'm going to get even more undignified. So if you can't handle the last time, you might want to get on before I start praising and worshiping my God above next time. Because next time I'm going to take it up a little bit. Next time I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Next time I'm going to be even more undignified than this. Hey, I love y'all. Y'all better learn how to dance like David danced because your breakthrough is connected to your praise and your worship. You better learn how to dance like David danced. I love y'all. Happy Friday. Thank God it's Friday. I hope that word blessed you. I will be right back on next week with another word. Good Lord willing. Y'all be safe out there this weekend. Don't do too much. I'm Grace Amber.